Hey guys, so I'm going to be making a, another batch of meat. This time it's going to be what's known as a BOM, a B-O-M-M. -M. Uh, it's a, a shortening of braise one month meat. This isn't uh, my recipe, but this is a recipe uh, by uh, one of the members on, on uh, uh, Got Me to Forum. Um, this is a five gallon recipe. Um, I'll put this and the one gallon recipe in the link uh, below. Uh, so if you're on gottenmead.com, go think uh, Bray. I think his user's name is uh, Love of Rose. So thank him for this. And uh, right now I'm just going to be making the starter. And then uh, we'll go through the rest of the uh, recipe as well. So first I have uh, uh, just a one gallon bottle. It's only a two, uh, two liter starter, so it's only gonna fill it up about halfway. Um, airlock, but this isn't gonna fill, be filled up. It's just to keep dust and stuff out. A half a cup, measuring cup, funnel, and other things. So uh, what we're gonna need for the starter is uh, 1800 milliliters of water, half a cup of honey, uh, one teaspoon of go firm. I don't have the go firm. Um, hopefully it'll be all right without it. And this is the most important part. It's 1388 Belgian strong yeast. This is the cornerstone of the recipe. If you don't have this uh, type of yeast, it's not really a bomb. Um, so this uh, this is the correct yeast. Let me show you again. 1388 Belgian strong uh, yeast. It's a uh, a W yeast uh, activator for brewing. So follow these instructions and then we'll add it to uh, the starter. So I've got my 1800 milliliters of water. I'm going to pour some of it into my container so I can have a little bit more room. So I'm going to uh, add a half a cup of honey to this, the rest of this, and then I'll add the yeast to this as well and then pour it in and that'll be our starter. Okay so we can add the yeast after it's uh, started its process. So every couple hours for the first three or for the three days that the starter is starting up, you just want to swirl it around, try and drive off some of that CO2. Or if you have a stir plate with one of those magnetic uh, uh, crossbars, uh, you can just throw that on top of the stir plate for the three days um, while the yeast is reactivating. Okay, so I'm going to add about a gallon, maybe a little more than a gallon of honey to about four and a half gallons of water. I'm trying to get the uh, specific gravity up to uh, 1.09 to 1.1 and I'll measure that with a hydrometer. Uh, so I'm gonna add about, uh, I'm gonna add a gallon and see what the gravity is and then I'll add more to uh, get the final gravity up to 1.1. Uh, okay, so I've mixed up the must and uh, the starting gravity is at 1.94 and uh, I think that's enough uh, honey. For right now, I'm going to add the starter in a bit. For right now, I'm going to add um, Three quarter tablespoons of potassium uh, carbonate, uh, one tablespoon of uh, DAP, and then two tablespoons of Fermed K. And then uh, these will be repeated, or the DAP and the Fermed K will be repeated at the one, uh, two third and the one third sugar break. So right now it's at 1.94, so at about 1.6 and about 1.3, then you add an additional tap and from Red K. Uh, 
Okay, so now everything's stirred up. I'm gonna add the starter. I'm just gonna swirl this around. Get all the yeast in the suspension first. Keep swirling it. So I'm gonna mix this up and then take a final uh, gravity reading. So the final gravity turned out to be uh, 1.92 um, with the starter. So I have just a little bit more than a six gallons of must right now. Um, and I've added those, uh, the, the DAP and the Ferment K and the potassium carbonate. So, once the yeast have eaten uh, uh, one third of the sugar, so at a point um, or 1.6, uh, 1.6, 1.61, I'll add another or tablespoon of DAP and tablespoon or two tablespoons of ferment K, and then again at 1.3. And uh, this will ferment. Uh, I've been told in about a week, and then at about a month, it's drinkable. So. All right, now I'm gonna cap it. This recipe says not to fill the airlock until one week in. And every day, agitate it. So you get uh, the carbon dioxide out of it. So, uh, stay tuned. So the gravity has uh, dropped to less than uh, about 60, a little less than 60, uh, 1.6. So uh, this is would be the uh, one of the uh, sugar breaks where I would add uh, uh, nutrients. Um, so the nutrients are two tablespoons of Fermit K and one tablespoon of DAP, which is a uh, diammonium phosphate. Let me zoom out real quick. It's di diammonium phosphate. So one tablespoon of that, and two tablespoons of the Fermit K, and then After that, shake, shake the, stir it up uh, to degas as well. So the uh, meat has made it to the uh, two-thirds a uh, sugar break. It's at one point one point three two. Just at one point three. Uh, so this is time to add another tablespoon of DAP and two tablespoons of Fermit K. And uh, unlike last time, I uh, uh, degassed it first to try and prevent some uh, of the bubble up. So stay tuned. So I racked it into my six gallon uh, carpoy and I put it out in my garage so it can uh, cold crash it's in the winter right now. Um, so uh, this is at the 30 day mark. I'm probably going to let it go for a little bit longer um, to try and age it just a little bit and then uh, bottle it up uh, in a little bit. I added uh, two vanilla beans to the mix 
uh, whole vanilla beans are about six inches long, and uh, I don't, you can't see them right now. They're sitting in the middle. Um, to add some, you know, vanilla flavor to the mix.